Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're taking a look at a modern deck called Super Friends. It's a deck with lots and lots of planeswalkers, and more importantly we're also playing a doubling season in this deck, which is a 5 mana enchantment that says, if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many tokens instead, and if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on that permanent permanent instead, and as it turns out, Planeswalkers work with loyalty counters, so if you have a doubling season in play and then play a Planeswalker, your Planeswalker will enter the battlefield with twice that many loyalty counters instead, which means that some Planeswalkers might be able to ultimate the turn you play them, which of course is a game-ending effect. And not too long ago, the rules also changed with how doubling season interacts with a Planeswalker's plus ability. So before the rules change, if you used a Planeswalker's plus ability, it would just add the counters that it says on the plus ability. But now, with a doubling season in play, if you use a Planeswalker's plus ability, it will also add double the amount of uh, loyalty counters that you would normally get. So that's also a nice upgrade for this kind of deck. So besides doubling season and Planeswalkers, of course we do need some acceleration to get to our doubling season and our expensive Planeswalkers a bit faster. So that's most of the deck. We've got some acceleration, we've got some Planeswalkers and some doubling seasons. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our one drops, where we have lots of acceleration. We've got four copies of Utopia Sprawl, which can enchant one of our forests. And then we have to choose a color, and if we tap the enchanted forest, we also get a mana of the chosen color, essentially just adding one mana of any color to our mana pool and also works very nicely with Arbor Elf since Arbor Elf can untap a forest so if we have a forest enchanted by Utopia Sprawl and untap it with Arbor Elf we essentially get two mana instead of just one and we also have four copies of Birds of Paradise which can make mana of any color which is useful in a four color deck and we also have four copies of Oath of Nyssa, which is a legendary enchantment, which when it enters the battlefield we get to look at the top three cards of our library, choose a creature, land or planeswalker and put it into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. So this gives us a nice little bit of card selection, helping us look for the missing pieces, whether that's planeswalkers, lands or maybe ramp creatures. And Oath of Nyssa also has a second ability, which says you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast planeswalker spells. So this also helps us fix our mana when it comes to casting planeswalkers, which can be useful when uh, having to fetch. So maybe you can save some points of life by uh, not having to fetch your shock lands. Instead, you can just maybe get a basic land instead. And as you may have noticed by now, we're just playing a four color planeswalker deck instead of all five colors. So you won't see any Sorens or Lilianas in this build, but there's still plenty of planeswalkers to go around in these four colors. Next up we also have three copies of Sylvan Caryatid, which is a two mana 03 defender with hexproof that can also make mana of any color like Birds of Paradise. So now it's time to go over all the different planeswalkers we're playing. As you may have noticed, we're all playing one-offs of each planeswalker just to increase the fun factor, make the games a bit more diverse, and hopefully we'll get to see many ultimates in action. So I won't spend too much time going over each planeswalker since there's so many of them, but I'll uh, briefly mention some of their abilities. We've got Nissa Voice of Zendikar, which is good at making plant tokens, and of course, whenever you have a planeswalker that makes creature tokens, that synergizes nicely with doubling season as well, since you get double the amount of creature tokens. We've got the Jace Cunning Castaway, which is probably the most synergistic planeswalker with doubling season, since you can ultimate him right away if you have a doubling season in play, make double the amount of uh, Jace tokens, and then those Jace tokens can make even more Jace tokens, so you can make an infinite amount of Jaces, and then those Jaces can make an infinite amount of Illusion tokens, so on the following turn you can attack for an infinite amount of damage. Then we get to our four mana planeswalkers where we have Elspeth, which also makes soldier tokens and can also ultimate right away, making your creatures, artifacts, enchantments and lands indestructible, which is also pretty useful. We've got Gideon Ally of Zendikar, which also makes tokens. We've got Jace Architect of Thought, which can also ultimate right away, letting you search your library and the opponent's library for a card and put it into play. We have Jace the Mind Sculptor, which doesn't need an introduction, just a powerful card advantage engine. We've got Chandra Torch of Defiance, which can also ultimate right away with the doubling season, making her a powerful emblem. We've got the Garak Wildspeaker, which synergizes nicely with our Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl package, in that it can uh, untap our lands. So if we have lands with Utopia Sprawl on them, then uh, they add even more mana, so this helps us ramp into even bigger stuff. 
We've got a Ralzarek, which is also a pretty fun one, since he can ultimate right away, letting us flip 5 coins to take extra turns. We've got Xenagos, which is similar to Gideon Alive Zanikar in that he makes tokens with the zero ability, but his plus one can also be useful in adding a lot of mana. We've got a Jani Vengeant, which can fire off Lightning Helishes and can also keep stuff tapped down. Then we have Kyura Master of Depths, which is also very synergistic with our mana creatures and our Utopia Sprawl, since her plus one lets us untap a creature and a land, so helps us ramp into even bigger stuff. And her ultimate, which we can use right away with Doubling Season, is also game-winning, making three Octopus creature tokens, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, it gets to fight an opposing creature. And of course, with Doubling Season, we get to make double the amount of Octopus creature tokens instead, so we get six of them. Then we have Taimyo Field Researcher, which is very good at protecting our other Planeswalkers with her minus 2 ability, and she can also ultimate right away with the doubling season, letting us draw 3 cards and then cast spells for free out of our hand. Then in the 5 mana department we have Garruk Primal Hunter, which also synergizes nicely with doubling season, making beast tokens with the plus 1 ability, and then also minus 6, which we can use right away with doubling season, making 6-6 six, six green worm creature tokens for each land we control, and if we can double that, that's uh, even better, of course. We also have Gideon Jura, which is just nice at uh, protecting our planeswalkers with his plus 2 ability, forcing creatures to attack Gideon instead. And we also have, of course, our 4 copies of doubling season, which is kind of the centerpiece of the deck. And then at 6 mana we have Elspeth, Sun's Champion, making soldier tokens with her plus 1, even better with doubling season, and can also ultimate right away with doubling season, giving our creatures plus 2, plus 2 and flying. And we also have Ajani, Unyielding, which is very nice in a Super Friends build, since his plus 2 ability helps us find more Planeswalkers, can also help us find mana creatures and doubling seasons, so just very synergistic in this kind of deck. And the ultimate ability can also be pretty ridiculous if you have lots of Planeswalkers and creatures out. Then our mana base is pretty straightforward, we want to have a lot of forests for Utopia Sprawl. So we have two Breeding Pools, which also counts as Forest, two Temple Garden and a Stomping Ground, then three basic forests, and also a few basic lands in other colors, just so we don't have to always get a Shock Land if we can afford to. So we've got an Island, a Plains and a Mountain, and then a total of nine Fetch Lands, three Misty Rainforest, three Windswept Heath and three Wooded Foothills. Then going over the sideboard, we get to play with some of the most powerful hate cards in modern. We've got three copies of Rest in Peace against graveyard decks, two copies of Stony Silence against artifact based decks. Then surprisingly, three copies of Blood Moon, despite being a four color deck. This uh, is still very manageable in this deck since we have so many basic lands, all those mana creatures, and Oath of Nyssa all helping us fix our mana so we can still run Blood Moon to hose opposing non basic lands. Then two is it Static Casters to take care of small creatures like the human decks, the affinity decks, and maybe some lingering souls that could be annoying. We've got two tireless trackers as a way to gain card advantage, and uh, those clue tokens also synergize with doubling season, so we get double the amount of clue tokens. And then we have three copies of Leyline of Sanctity, another very versatile sideboard card which shines against burn decks, decks with a lot of hand disruption, and even if we don't have it in our opening hand, we can still pretty easily cast it on turn three, thanks to our uh, mana creatures, so it's still not a dead card if we draw it later in the game. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand is okay. We've got our doubling season, a bit light on lands and ramp creatures, but we've got Utopia Sprawl, which essentially counts as a mana source, and then Oath of Nyssa can maybe help us find a land as well. So this is a turn 3 Elspeth, hopefully turn 4 doubling season, Opponent with the Windswept Heath, just getting a basic forest into Lanowar Elves, so up against an Elf deck. Alright, we picked up Arbor Elf ourselves, so that's nice. So we can take two and then play Arbor Elf next turn, play Utopia Sprawl, and get the benefit right away. Although, it's a little awkward that our other land is a mountain, so we can't actually use our mountain to cast Utopia Sprawl, so we miss out on a bit of mana next turn. Opponent with a lead the Stampede on turn two. Let's see what they find. Just one Elvish Visionary, wow, the opponent got pretty unlucky there. They got to look at the top five and only found one creature. Find a Jani Vengeant. So here we can Utopia Sprawl and Temple Garden. And we have to choose a color. It's pretty tricky here what to choose. I think we just go for green, since we already have the Oath of Nyssa to fix our Planeswalkers. Then we can untap. And we don't have enough mana here to also play a 
four mana Planeswalker, so let us uh, tamp this for green, play Oath of Nyssa, try to find some lands or some other Planeswalkers. All right, so we found Stomping Ground and Chandra Torch of Defiance. So I think we just go for the Stomping Ground. We already have two Planeswalkers. And then we can just play a tapped Stomping Ground for now. Say go. And then next turn we can run out Doubling Season if we want to. Or we can uh, run out a Planeswalker right away. Opponent runs out the Elvish Visionary and a Razor Verge Thicket. And Lanowar Elves gets in for one. Alright, so let's untap. Find another Oath of Nyssa. Here we can make a total of six mana, which is enough for Oath of Nyssa plus Doubling Season, I guess. Could also just a Jani Vengeance, Lightning Helix something, but I'm not too interested in killing the Lanowar Elves here. Could also Elspeth and use the plus ability, then next turn drop Doubling Season, and then if we plus Elspeth, we get to make double the tokens. But I think we just want to get the Doubling Season in play first. So let us play Oath of Nyssa first, since that might change our decision here. Doesn't matter which one we keep. Still get the effect. And I guess we just get uh, a random fetch land here, Misty Rainforest, in case we need to get Basic Island. Let's just uh, make some mana. Untap with Arbor Elf. Make some more mana. Play Doubling Season. And then next turn, our Planeswalkers will be able to come into play with double the loyalty counters. Ajani can't ultimate right away, but Elspeth can. But we're probably better off plussing them first. Or in case this is an Azuri, we might want to use Ajani to kill Azuri. So let's draw. Sylvan carry added, so let's see, we can make uh, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana, so that's enough for carry added plus uh, one of our planeswalkers, so I think we do that here. So I'm gonna fetch up an island, just don't want to take too much damage. Although, let's see, do we need all our mana? 4, 5, 6, 7, so yeah, we can just get a tap land here instead, so might as well get a breeding pool then. Play the carry added. Make some mana. Doesn't matter which colors we make because we have Oath of Nissa in play. Play a Jani. And then we will just Lightning Helix Azuri here to play it safe. And then we have the carry added to protect a Jani as well from the small elves. And then next turn we can drop Elspeth. Start making even more tokens to protect our Planeswalkers. Not our lead the Stampede. Let's see if our opponent gets a bit luckier this time. Alright, they did find four Elves this time. So, Dwinan's Elite, Lanowar Elves, Nettle Sentinel and Elvish Mystic. We're gonna run out Elvish Mystic, Lanowar Elves, Nettle Sentinel. So they still have the Dwinan's Elite in hand. Alright, let's draw. Ooh, Jace cunning cast away, so we just get to go off here. So the game should be over. Uh, let's see, how much mana do we have? Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can do both here. So let's play Elspeth. And could ultimate here if we wanted to, but I think just plussing is fine. And then play Jace. And we can make however many Jaces we want. And this is probably enough. And then just make a bunch of illusions with each one of them. And then we can still use a Jani to keep down, I guess, uh, Lanowar Elves. All right, this is uh, probably good enough. All right, we got there. So managed to go off against Elves. In the sideboard, we get to add is it Static Caster, which I think is the only card we're interested in here. 
could also shave some number of doubling season if we expect our opponent to bring in enchantment hate might be reasonable don't want our opponent to just uh, use court of calling or reclamation sage to destroy our five mana enchantment this hand's okay again we have arbor elf plus utopia sprawl to accelerate us and this time we have plenty of forests so we can cast our planeswalker on turn two and we don't need a doubling season to win with this hand so forest into arbor elf say go and then next turn utopia sprawl naming red and then we can cast a chandra if we want to or if we use temple garden we can also cast a jani elvish arch druid so let's see here so if we play a jani or chandra they both die to the lanor elves attacking them since they will still be at one loyalty afterwards so would we rather keep chandra or keep a jani think a jani is going to be more useful here at uh, keeping stuff tapped down so i'm gonna run out to chandra first let's play the temple garden here i think play utopia sprawl on the forest name red tap this and tap this tap this play chandra and kill the archroid say go so chandra's gonna die but next turn we get to play gideon if we want to Another Arch Druid, alright. Got a Garruk Wildspeaker instead, so let's see. So here we should be able to play Garruk and another Planeswalker. So 4 mana for Garruk. And then we can untap 2 lands and then have another 5 mana even. So we should also be able to play Gideon. So let's make some mana. Play Garruk. This is going to fetch. Um, doesn't really matter too much. I guess we get a breeding pool just in case. And we could play a Jani to kill the Archer, but I would rather play Gideon here. So let's make a white. Untap two lands. And then make some more mana. Play Gideon Jura. Plus. And this forces the opponent to attack our Gideon. And then next turn we can play a Jani to kill the Arch Druid. Do it as Elite. And Shaman. Okay. So we're down to 10. Lenor Elves attacks Gideon. Is it Static Cast or is a great draw here? So let's see how much damage we can do. Can use Gideon to also kill the Elvish Arch Druid if we want to can make a lot of mana here Let's start by making some mana so six mana so we can play a Jani plus is it static caster here kill the arch druid then we can untap some lands play a static caster Plus with Gideon, and I think we say go so that the Static Caster can block an elf before shooting down the elves. It does give the opponent one more mana, which can be relevant, but I think we'll be okay. I guess we could have just held on to the Static Caster here, no reason to play it out main phase. But uh, alright, our opponents had enough, so we were gonna take over here with all our Planeswalkers. No doubling season needed in the second game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty land light hand, but we do have. Utopia Sprawl and Birds of Paradise, plus Oath of Nyssa to maybe help us find the land as well, so I'm willing to keep. Swamp into Border Post, alright. Opponent's got a Brew going. Wooded Foothills is a good draw. I think we just get a basic Forest. Since we have the Oath of Nyssa anyways, don't need to take too much damage. And then, I think we just play the Birds. So next turn we can play Utopia Sprawl and take advantage of the extra mana right away. Which is almost as if we were playing a mana creature with haste. While if we play Utopia Sprawl first, it's a bit safer in that our opponent can't kill the Utopia Sprawl as easily. But uh, we lose out on one mana. 
by playing the Utopia Sprawl first. Alright, we get to untap and Jace is not a bad one here. Could actually just cast Jace Cunning Castaway here as well, which is pretty interesting. But I think we'd rather develop our mana first. So let's get another basic forest. Play Utopia Sprawl on the forest. I guess if we name blue here, we can still play Jace Cunning Castaway. That's probably good enough. And then I will make an illusion token. Say go. And then next turn we can cast one of our four mana planeswalkers if the bird's still alive. Alright, opponent says go. I think we're casting Jason Mind Sculptor here, since a Jani can't really tap anything down. Gideon is also fine, I guess, but I would rather find more lands here with the Brainstorm ability. And we couldn't even cast Gideon since Utopia Sprawl's on blue and we don't have Oath of Nissa in play yet, so. Let's play the Jace. Maybe we should have considered using Jace to plus and attack with the Illusion first, but I think I'm fine uh, brainstorming here. If our opponent had Lightning Bolt, they probably would have used it already. And uh, don't need another Oath of Nyssa. Maybe Elspeth is too expensive here. Don't really need it. We already have plenty of good Planeswalkers going. And then we can fetch for yet another basic forest. Play Oath of Nyssa. And take a look at some fresh cards. Um, I'll take the Sylvan. And then plus with Jace. Attack with our Illusion. Not a bad turn 3 here. And I guess we're discarding the Sylvan carry added here. Say go. And alright, our opponent scoops it up, so we still don't quite know what they're up to. Border post typically indicates some sort of combo deck involving Restore Balance, but of course Planeswalkers don't really care about Restore Balance too much. I don't think Blood Moon is going to be too effective. I guess Stony Silence could be okay since that shuts off the Border Posts. Tireless Tracker could be okay, but I think we have enough late game with our Planeswalkers that we don't need it. So just two Stony Silence coming in. What do we take out? I could see Doubling Season being too slow in this kind of matchup. If our opponent tries to combo us, maybe take away some of our lands. Doubling season could be too slow. So I'm okay shaving two copies here, given that I don't really know which Planeswalker is uh, bad in this matchup. Alright, this hands okay. We've got our acceleration with Arbor Elf, Oath of Nyssa to find some more action. Definitely a bit on the slower side, since we don't have any 4 mana Planeswalkers and only one Accelerator, but uh, still a serviceable hand I think. Once we see more from the opponent's deck, we might be able to make some more informed decisions. Like if we know for a fact that they're casting Restore Balance, then our value of some cards might change. Alright, opponent on island this time. And another border post, alright. I think we're just leading with Arbor Elf. Thermorphic Expanse, alright. And Greater Gargadon suspended, so that's also typical of uh, Restore Balance decks. Utopia Sprawl, alright, that's a nice pickup here, so we can actually play a Jani Vengeance and tap down one of the opponent's permanents. That worked out beautifully. So let's just get Basic Forest here. And then we have to enchant the Temple Garden here, since we want to name Red with Utopia Sprawl. And then make white mana, untap, and then it doesn't matter which mana we make. Play a Jani Vengeance. And then plus on the planes, I guess, over the border post. Since uh, one of the common cascade cards is the blue-white one, the enchantment. Ardent Plea. And the border post doesn't help with casting Ardent Plea. I guess if they have Violent Outburst, the border post still helps. But given that our opponent specifically fetched for a planes, I think it makes sense to keep that tap down, despite the border post being able to produce two colors. Another thermorphic expanse. And getting these planeswalkers into play before they get to cascade into restore balance is very important since planeswalkers don't go away. 
they weren't really around when balance got printed in the first place. All right, stomping ground. So here we can just cast a Garrick and we can even cast Oath of Nyssa here, which is also going to fix our mana for Garrick. And I think we want to get Garrick in play before doubling season, just again to play around uh, restore balance. So let's see what we find. Those are some good ones. I think we're still casting Garrick here anyways. I guess we'll take a Chandra Torch of Defiance, which seems the most powerful one, although we do have the doubling season to go with Jace cutting castaway, so maybe we should take Jace anyways. All right, makes sense. And then make some mana. Play Garrick. And make a beast. And keep the plane step down, I think, still. And say go. Greater Gargodon, getting closer to coming off of Suspend, but still eight counters. So not a worry yet. All right, opponent does have Islands. Let's see if they finally cast something. Maybe another Border Post. Field Mist Border Post comes into play tapped. So I don't think we'll be able to keep them off of uh, cascading into a Restore Balance next turn since they'll have the planes in hand and the island in play along with the border post. So Jani can't keep them off of blue and white for the Ardent plea, but that's okay. Restore Balance also doesn't affect enchantments, so those are safe. So I think we just want to deploy a doubling season here while we can. And we might not even want to play an extra land, since it's going to get destroyed anyways. Because the opponent can sacrifice their lands to the Greater Gargadon. And that way we'll have fewer lands than the opponent and have to end up sacrificing them. So let's play Doubling Season before we plus any Planeswalkers, since then they'll get more loyalty. So we can make two beasts. And Ajani can go up to seven loyalty. So I guess we can attack first. Then plus with Garrick. And plus with Ajani, and I guess we'll keep down the blue-white border post here. So I expect our opponent to go off this turn, but we should still be in okay shape. Can also follow up with Stomping Ground into Birds of Paradise. Another border post, alright. And Demonic Dread, alright, so that's their Cascade spell of choice. There's a Restore Balance, so I guess we get to keep two lands. So we'll keep Temple Garden and the Forest. Sacrifice the Islands. All our creatures are gone. And then we'll keep Jace. And doesn't matter too much, I guess we'll keep the Stomping Ground. Discard the birds. Surprise their opponent didn't sacrifice their lands with the Greater Gargodon. So they might have other plans with those lands. Missa Voice of Zendikar is not bad, but here we can just go off with Jace, and uh, that should leave us in a pretty good position. So let's make some mana, play a Jace, and uh, make a few copies here. just to be safe. All right, that's probably enough. Then make some illusions, force our opponent to restore balance again, but we're still gonna be in a pretty nice position here. And I'm gonna keep some Jaces at six loyalty, I think, or just plus them. So let's plus the rest. Make some more tokens over here. Alright, this should be enough insurance. And then let's keep making beasts with Garak. And Ajani is gonna... could destroy our opponent's lands, I guess. Seems okay. They can sacrifice their lands to the Gargodon in response, but they don't. 
All right, uh, not gonna play out anything. So let's say go. And then next turn we should have them dead unless they restore balance again, but then we can keep going off with our Jaces. All right, and that does it. So Jace, cunning castaway, claims another victim. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And this hand seems okay. Not a ton of action besides Garak, but we can cast him pretty early, so it's probably worth it here. So let's fetch up a basic forest for now. Maybe should have played the uh, foothills instead here since we have more blue planeswalkers than red ones. So we might want to get basic island instead of basic mountain more often, but probably not going to matter too much given the two birds. Opponent on Llanowar Elves. All right, let's play Oath of Nyssa first. Find some more birds and Ralzarek. Guess we'll take Ralzarek. Play a birds number two. And play a tapped Temple Garden. Say go. So next turn we can already play Garak. And there's Corsair of Krufix instead. All right, that doesn't die to Ralzarek and Eternal Witness on top. I guess we can play Utopia Sprawl first since doesn't use up any mana. Name red. I think we just fetch up another basic forest since now we have the Oath of Nissa anyways to fix our mana. Play Garrick. Make a beast, which can block the courser. Say go. Noble Hierarch on top. I guess uh, if they can draw into that somehow or next turn, the courser can attack for three into our beast tokens. Ralzarek can also ramp us by untapping our land with Utopia Sprawl, for example. So pretty versatile here. Opponent with a fetch land, gains a life from Corsair, gets a basic forest, tireless tracker on top. So we're opponent definitely on the green-white kind of uh, value deck. Probably have collected company as well. And yeah, if we don't see them attack, they might just company end of turn here. All right, Chandra to draw. Guess we can just Chandra kill Corsair, make a beast and say go. Seems pretty good. Could have also cast Ralzarek and then untapped our lands to still be able to cast Chandra, but then our birds would be tapped. And I think we would rather have the birds on defense in case our opponent does company to lots of creatures that can threaten our planeswalkers. So let's kill Corsa right now. So we know they're at least finding the tireless tracker with their collected company here. So let's make a beast, and I think we just play defense here. Try to leverage our planeswalkers. So there's a company. It's gonna find tracker plus something else. Voice of Resurgence, that's fine. Alright, this is good. So it's the opponent's tracker versus our planeswalkers. And a courser as well, finds tectonic edge. Cannot kill our basic forest, can only destroy non-basic lands which is one of the important reasons to get the basic lands for Utopia Sprawl early on. But looks like they have a Ghost Quarters, which can kill the forest. But it's also going to give us a land in return. No attacks from the tracker. Let's untap. Find Arbor Elf. So I think we start by plusing Chandra here. See if we can find anything we can play. All right, Garak Wildspeaker, that works. Let's cast Garak. Could untap our lands, our opponent could ghost quarter in response, that's not the end of the world. Or we can make more beasts. Kind of like untapping our lands here. Alright, they let us untap. So now we can Ralzarek, kill the tireless tracker. And then make another beast. Could cash in our Garak to draw three cards, but... Might as well keep making beasts. And I guess we'll play out the Arbor Elf as well, which can ramp us even more next turn. All right, so as long as their opponent doesn't have some sort of infinite combo in their deck, I think our Planeswalkers are going to outvalue them. Opponent uses Ghost Quarter. We'll go ahead and get... I guess we'll go with the Island since we already have Chandra in play. We're empty-handed anyway, so it's not like we can represent anything... All right, Phyrexian Revoker. That's actually funny, since I can name one of our Planeswalkers. Opponent's going to sag the clue and then 
play the Revoker, probably naming Garak Primal Hunter, another company on top, since we could ultimate Garak Primal Hunter next turn if we wanted to, although I don't think we want to. Could also Overrun next turn, which might be able to kill our opponents. So lots of options for next turn. Ral Zarek can also tap down a blocker from the opponent. All right, and our opponent just scoops it up. So we're up against Green-White Company. So what do we want here? Might want our own Tireless Trackers. And is it Static Caster? Could be okay, but I don't think it's worth it. There's no Thalias we need to get rid of. I guess it kills the Phyrex and Revoker, but that's about it. So no Static Casters. What do we take out is a question. Kiora could be a bit weak. I think maybe Xenagos can also go. They do make extra mana, which could be useful, but I think our opponent's not really messing with our mana creatures in the first place, so I don't think we need more acceleration-type Planeswalkers. And uh, yeah, this should be okay. They haven't seen doubling season yet, so we might be able to steal a game with that as well. And yeah, speaking of doubling season, this hand has it. A bit light on lands, but we do have plenty of mana creatures, so I think we still keep. Given that we're on a draw, we get an extra draw as well at a land. Planes, go. All right. And Breeding Pool is a nice draw, so let's fetch up Basic Forests and run out Arbor Elf, which is the most threatening of the mana creatures, so might require a path to exile if our opponent left those in, but uh, seems unlikely, which is why the Tireless Tracker plan might work out. And Ghost Corridor, that's fine. We're not going to keep up Plains Ghost Corridor, so no green mana yet. All right, so... Run out Birds... Untap the basic forests and play carry at it. So nice accelerated start. Next turn we can drop doubling season and then shortly thereafter Elspeth. And I don't think they're gonna have brought in any major sweeper effects. Although who knows? Maybe they brought in our Wrath of God to try and get us. There's a forest. And scavenging ooze, alright. Makes a Wrath of God less likely. Don't really care about scavenging ooze in the slightest. So if they don't have an answer to doubling season, I like our chances. Misty Rainforest as well. Can keep that until after we brainstorm with Chase, perhaps. So here we can just run out doubling season, or we can uh, take two to have the carry edit untapped. Doesn't really matter with scavenging ooze, so might as well play it tapped and take the hit. And then next turn, if we can play Elspeth, that should be difficult for the opponent to overcome unless they have an answer like Oblivion Ring, Phyrex and Revoker, and then we still have our Jace to provide card advantage, so. Turn 3 doubling season, play a tap land, say go. And let's see what they can do here. Field of Ruin. It's gonna be Reclamation Sage, alright, so they did have an answer for doubling season, that's okay. They probably brought it in to destroy Utopia Sprawls more than anything, but uh, happens to be pretty effective against doubling season as well. So we take two from the Ooze, but Elspeth by herself is still good enough against these type of creature decks. Ooh, Tireless Tracker as well. Could go Tireless Tracker, play the Fetch Land, Fetch, and still have enough mana for Jace. And then Jace can plus two to protect himself, or can just minus bouncing the Ooze, but then could die to the Reclamation Sage if opponent has a path. Play the Tracker. Play the Misty. And the reason to play Jace first is that if our opponent does have Oblivion Ring or Phyrex and Revoker, then they're more likely to get rid of Jace. And I think Elspeth is much more important since she can win the game by herself, while Jace could still end up dying here. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, so they can't beat the value from the Tyro Striker by himself and uh, still had some nice follow ups. So our sideboard card working out pretty nicely here. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. All right, we're on the play. This sounds pretty good. Got a bit of lands, a bit of acceleration, Oath of Nyssa, and some Planeswalkers. Uh, let's fetch up Basic Forest, given that we have the Oath of Nyssa anyways to fix our mana for Planeswalkers. No reason to take extra damage. Play the birds, say go. Next turn we could drop a Jace Cunning Castaway. All right, nothing from the opponent. Well, now that we picked up Arbor Elf, we might be better off uh, playing Oath of Nyssa plus Arbor Elf here, and then set up Gideon for next turn guaranteed. So let's play Oath of Nyssa, and that finds 
Forest and Jace Architect. I think we just get the forest here. Don't think we want to get too greedy. We already have plenty of Planeswalkers in hand. And then play the Arbor Elf and play a tapped Breeding Pool. Say go. So next turn we'll get to cast Gideon if we want to. Fauna Shaman, all right. Ooh, doubling season, never mind. So let's play doubling season instead. Guess we need to tap our mana with Arbrel first. So there's doubling season and we have the combo with Jace Cunning Castaway yet again. Somehow keep drawing our Jace Cunning Castaway. So if they can't interact here, they should just be dead. Elvish Arch Druid, sure. So they hit us for three. And yep, let's just combo them. Make a bunch of tokens. Make a bunch more tokens. Make a bunch more tokens. And then uh, make a few illusions, I guess. I guess we might as well play the Utopia Sprawl, because why not? Name white. And say go. Let's see if they have their own infinite combo that can kill us. All right, they can't. On to sideboarding against what looks like a creature combo deck. Uh, is a study caster might be good. And then I don't think we need anything else. What do we take out? Shave some random planeswalkers. Elspeth can go. And Xenagos can go. All right, let's try this. Hopefully we get to see some uh, different Planeswalkers in action. All right, this hand seems okay. Plenty of Utopia Sprawls and then Oath of Nyssa to find a Planeswalker. And then is it Static Caster, which may or may not be good. Don't know yet. All right, no turn one elf, so who knows? Maybe is it Static Caster is not even worth it. We're gonna fetch a forest and play birds. Opponent missing their second land drop. That's unfortunate. It's... Uh, Utopia Sprawl, name green, and then we get to Oath of Nyssa, find, is it Static Caster, second one, these could have been Planeswalkers, but oh well, and then play the Karyatid. Alright, opponent finds their second land, and it's Devoted Druid, so what now, let's make a blue, make a blue, Red, red, some green, play Static Caster, play another Static Caster, shoot a Devoted Druid, shoot a Devoted Druid, say go. So now any two toughness creature they play dies, and that's a pretty quick win. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.